Let your imagination soar with Audible. With stories across every genre, from expert advice to fantasy, you'll be inspired to imagine new worlds, possibilities, and ways of thinking. Listening can even lead to a positive change in your mood, habits, and overall well-being. As an Audible member, you'll get to choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including bestsellers and new releases. Allow yourself to delve into the spooky this season by listening to classics like Stephen King's The Shining and Pet Cemetery. There's more to imagine when you listen. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash imagine or text imagine to 500-500. That's audible.com slash imagine or text imagine to 500-500. Explaining football to the friend who's just there for the nachos? Hard. Tailgating from home like a pro with snacks and drinks everyone will love? An easy win. And with Instacart helping deliver the snack time MVPs to your door, you're ready for the game in as fast as 30 minutes. So you never miss a play or lose your seat on the couch or have to go head to head for the last chicken wing. Shop game day faves on Instacart and enjoy $0 delivery fees on your first three grocery orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Other fees and terms apply. Edit audio. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but not in an NPR way. It's more like we're at the bar, having cocktails, getting into your business sort of way. It's it's giving drunk NPR. Oh, and producer Steph is here too. Hello. Today we chat, well, checking boxes in the pursuit of meaningful work. Hi, friends. Welcome back. And woo, have we got a doozy of a chat for you today. I'm so excited. Okay, full disclosure, there were quite a few points in this conversation where my head hurt because I was trying to get into Masha's brain. Now, she is so smart, y'all. She's accomplished. I mean, she reads Dostoevsky for like relaxing purposes, okay? She started several successful tech companies, though Masha would probably fight me on my use of the word successful. But I am saying it, Masha. Do you hear me? Now, She is trying to figure out what work venture she wants to spin up next. But the $20 million question is, is it possible that Masha's smarts and her analytical thinking skills are getting in the way of her getting to the heart of this quest? Well, let's take a listen and try to figure out together if it's possible to think your way out of a conundrum. I don't know. Is it? Maybe. Maybe not. We're going to see. I'm Masha. I am currently in a bit of a transition period. Prior to this, I was a tech startup founder. I've worked in tech my whole career, and I am based in Montreal. All right. I already heard smart, smart, and smart. And accomplished. Nerd, nerd, and nerd. With a side of giant accomplishments. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about where you are. And you mentioned you're in a transition. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm still very much there. I'm, you know, figuring out my next move because I feel like I have relinquished the things that used to motivate me and I have not yet necessarily found the next North Star. So I'm in this period of curiosity to kind of just find what is the direction setting now, right? Because if before it was like, to your point, achievement, 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 accomplishment, accomplishment. Someone said the other day to me that they're like, oh, I looked at your LinkedIn profile and it's so impressive. I'm like, interesting take because I look at my LinkedIn (laughs) profile and it's like the graveyard of things that didn't work, you know? So whatever, all in the eyes of the LinkedIn profile looker, I guess. Well, there's something about like when you list out things you've done that's like, I did some shit, you know, like, like, <laughs> look at that. But you said something to the effect of I am I gave up my expectations or what was that that you said? Well, so you kind of brought up the point around accomplishments. Yes. And I watched this small snippet of an interview with Dax Shepard where he talks about how The majority of people never get to get on the other side of their dreams. Like they have Mm. these big dreams, like I'm going to be so happy when I have a million dollars. I'm going to be incredibly, you know, fulfilled when I have a family and a house on the hill and a car and a Lambo and whatever. Um, 
But most people never really get to get to the other side of their dreams where they have actually accomplished them. And he was like, well, I have. Like, I made a million bucks. I was an actor. People knew who I was. And yet here I was at the lowest point in my life and I was not actually any happier. And I like to do these things that I call nap meditations, which is really just like mostly a nap, but I put in (laughs) a yoga nidra (laughs) meditation at the same time. (laughs) Whatever this is, I'm down for this. Exactly. You just lie down, listen to some really calming, soothing voice telling you to relax a variety of muscles. So anyway, I was kind of listening to that and watching the interview. And I had this real transcendent light bulb moment where I was like, wow, I spent my whole life checking boxes. And Mm. each time I checked the box, I didn't really feel any happier, but I could see the next big box that I was going to check. And I kept lying to myself, you know, not consciously, but lying to myself that the next big box is definitely going to be the box that's like, yeah, I'm going to figure it out. Then I'm going to be real happy. Then I can relax. Then I can, yeah, then I can stop being so anxious and questioning my own self-worth every time. Sure. And then I heard this. go for you? Yeah, fantastic, (laughs) as you may guess. And thank you for listening. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And done. Um, So yeah, find the checkbox. No, and so after this uh, interview, I was like, oh, shit. Okay, right. Now I can't unsee it. Like, I have checked and now I have enough data, I guess. I'm, you know, in my like late 30s at this point. So I have enough data where I've checked a bunch of these boxes and I have fundamentally not actually changed my level of happiness. Yeah. So I can't really unsee that now. So I'm letting go of the idea of the box checking. But now I'm like, okay, cool. So now what? What is the... What is the compass now? Because before it was pretty clear, the boxes are also in order, right? They're kind of like a rubric for doing an assignment or completing a class, right? It's like, if you're starting a startup, it's like, okay, great. Get an idea. Get some early customers. Hire a team. Raise some money. Check, 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 any check. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, That's where I'm at. So, okay. So, clarifying question. Is this happiness around work that you want to find Or is this a more general conversation to, I want to find more joy, 10% more joy in my life, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Um, Or is it it more like, what's my next thing? Or or are these things all connected? Yeah, I think for me, I have, maybe in an unhealthy way, I have no separation between work and non-work I'm so different from that. So is stuff. Yeah. Okay, Just kidding. Well, We're exactly the same. That's why I'm great. <laughs> You're in good company. No, so I can't <laughs> figure out how to separate those things, probably because I am, you know, a quote unquote, whatever knowledge worker, like I yeah. don't clock into somewhere that I can then clock out of successfully. Um, so I feel like I have the idea in my head that my motivations generally are actually similar across Mm. my life and my work and my non-work in the sense that if I was before I was checking boxes in my work, I was probably checking boxes in my personal relationship and my health, fitness, et cetera, right? So now it's almost like that paradigm has clearly not actually served me to the way that I thought it would. So what is the new paradigm? Yeah, because because it, because it's almost like it's almost like you're just saying like your operating system isn't working, and you mm. want to you want to replace it, but you're not sure what with. Right. And what's really interesting, and what is a, a pitfall, and is that you then want to check the box of of changing. So like a checkbox, right? I think yeah. is kind of like fairly well defined. At least for me, it was sure. in the sense that it was like. Start a startup. Okay, check. Raise a million bucks. Okay, check. Right? So it's like, it's a clear defined thing that is like a goal. What if, if we're saying that that doesn't super serve us, what if the actual only directionality is to follow curiosity? Yeah. Right. Like what if and that is just one idea. Like maybe there are other things. Maybe some people follow money. Maybe some people follow putting their worth in 
family and Mm -hmm. not caring as much about work. You know what I mean? So like there's, I think there's many models for figuring out what success and fulfillment looks like for you. It's just, I realized that even though I got into tech because it was so seemingly permissionless in the sense that like really young people who had no, on paper, no reason (laughs) to be doing any of the things that they were doing and yet they were doing them. Yeah. So that's always been exciting to me. But instead of getting motivated by that kind of intrinsically, it was still a thing that I was trying to do for like external validation. Sure. Like, hey, look, I've checked this box, right? So I think that's the piece that I'm trying to maybe let go a little bit more and cultivate something that's more intrinsically fulfilling and maybe intrinsically fulfilling through the journey versus getting to some kind of a destination and then being like, okay, great, I'm done, I'm happy now. Now what? Well, let me ask you a practical question Hmm. without getting too into your business. What is your, like, financial setup look like? Because, mm-hmm. you know, because if like for some people, like if I, you know, if all of a sudden my money paying job went away, I'd be like, I have to hustle ASAP and I have to find something and I don't have the space or time to to do that. So are you able to take this space and time? Yeah. So I'm pretty lucky in that sense. I have like really incredible support systems and I'm able to reduce my Let's throw in another tech jargon, personal burn rate. Oh my God. Uh, pretty well. <laughs> I can just spend less money, guys. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm saying. I can spend yeah. less money in a month um, than, you know, I would normally or whatever. So and I have a little bit. for you. Yeah, and that's okay. comfy. But I have, there's still an end point to it, right? I'm not independently yeah. wealthy enough to just kind of mess around forever. But also I would add in an and that you seem very purpose driven. Mm. Yeah, I've always been a driver. That's yeah. true fundamentally. I think the piece that had derailed me a little bit is that I keep realizing that I'm driving and I'm caring so much and I'm doing all these things because that's just natural to me toward no impact that I'm either proud of or even able to recognize. Yeah. So it's funny that you say I'm purpose driven It's like, yes, clearly I need to know why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. And I think that is the part that's missing right now. Yeah, well, when I say purpose-driven, I mean like you want to move a thing. You want to do a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and well, that's what I was thinking. Is there like a middle road of Dak Shepard and this thinking and Masha who's just like, I got to do all this stuff? Like, so is there a middle road where you're like, like where there's an acceptance of who you are at the core, which is that- you can take away the boxes, but you're still going to have outlines and plans and you're going to be trying to do shit. But like, could you be doing it in a way where you're not trying to get at any particular place? You're enjoying the process of the doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's I mean, which, key. by the way, isn't that like everyone's trying to do that? Like, right. it's like the hello, Buddhism, you know, meditation, be in the present moment. But like how hard that is. Mm-hmm. And I mean- Ultimately, I think you have to be in the moment happy with the thing towards which I guess you're putting your energy, right? Um, Yeah. I think I fall into this trap a little bit in the sense that I'm so happy to like eat glass and do dumb shit. I don't actually in the purpose of well toward the purpose (laughs) of something amazing and huge and you know big out there, then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do whatever. Like, I'll bring coffee, I'll pick up garbage, I will eat glass. It's fine. It makes sense because the why is clear. There are so many reasons to travel. Apogee Travel is giving you a new one, and it's real good. With Apogee Travel, you get the same hotel deals as all the other booking sites, but now you can support charities you care about at the same time. You don't have to change where you go, what you do, or how much you pay. All you have to change is where you book. You pick your hotel deal, choose your charity to support, and enjoy your trip. Simple as that. Apogee Travel is changing the booking industry for good. Book your next trip and make a real difference at ApogeeTravel.com. Or download the Apogee Travel mobile app in the app stores. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. 
your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales. And we've built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. You know that feeling when your favorite brand really gets you? Deliver that feeling to your customers every time. Memorable moments like these are key to building your business and your brand. Clavio turns your customer data into real-time connections across AI-powered email, SMS, and more, making every moment count so you can continue to build smarter, more meaningful relationships with your customers. Build smarter digital relationships with your customers and make every moment count with Clavio. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash bfcm. Let me ask you this question. If there were no constraints, money was not an object, time was not an object, you wouldn't be disappointing anyone, you wouldn't be worried about anything. Like someone just came down with a, a wand and just was like, zing, and you could have it. Do you know what that thing is you would want to build or do or be a part of? Or the indicators of what would make you happy? Like, do you do you know the answer to that question? Mm. I know a lot of the hows in the sense of like, I know that I want to work with a team of, you know, incredible individuals whom I love and I want to kind of yeah. be around and we have kind of an improv-like style of working together, et cetera, et cetera. So I know that that's true. And when I'm in a team like that, that makes me really happy. Okay. Um, I also know that broadly, like, even though there are a lot of disgusting aspects to it, I still feel like, or should I say uninspiring? Probably. <laughs> even though there are still a lot of really uninspiring aspects to the tech industry, it's still the one that excites me the most. It's still the one where I see it's the most. It's a cozy sweater. Yeah. Well, and also I think like just the the potential of yeah. making something out of nothing has always been incredibly fascinating to me. And I can't like let that go because I think that is a fundamental truth that I do believe. So probably something around, in or around tech, right? Okay. And with then good people. With good people. Okay. And so like realistically, I just want to build cool shit with cool people and have fun doing it, right? Yeah. And so that's a filter. Okay. But that, that almost feels like a way to decide what not to do. Yes. Like if yes. those things are not met, then it's like, okay, clearly this is not for me. And I have, you know, a fair amount of those criteria. But in terms of picking a direction in which you do want to go, that's like a shit filter. <laughs> because it's so broad. Well, because it's so broad, right? So like... If I'm a driver and I'm trying to pick a direction, knowing that I want to do it with good people and I want it to be cool doesn't really filter down <laughs> the world, right? It doesn't help me decide. Um, it well, helps me I mean, decide I, in a negative sense. Dare, dare I say, might mm -hmm. I push back on that? Please. I think it is not always easy to find good people to work with. I think there's a lot of shitheads. I said it. I apologize to you shitheads. But I think that... <laughs> It is not always easy to find like-minded, strong people you want to work with. So I would say that first. And if you started there and then you were iterating with people, the, the idea, I think, would then come because you, you have mm. the process in place. You already know how to do that. And then if you find the people, then there's like a, well, what are we interested in doing? Mm. But I also want to say, I feel like... There's no part of me, even in the brief amount of time that we've been talking, that's like Masha's not going to be able to find what that next thing is. Like, I think you're probably going to have it by next week. But I think it's about the work is in the relationship to the process. Hmm. Like, finding the joy in the work and not being like, 
if I can get it to this place. Hmm. I also really like how you framed sort of the idea of being like, of course, I have people now that I am, you know, infinitely in love with in terms of like being open and inspired with and collaborative and all those things. Um, And kind of getting together with them and putting our heads together and being like the purpose of this conversation is to figure out what we want to do together yeah. because we know that we want to do it together is a really interesting approach because it kind of runs counter to the way that I've normally worked. Yeah, you usually start with the idea. Well, and also, as I mentioned, I'm usually the driver. So I'm mm-hmm. usually like, holy shit, okay, we got to do this thing. I need this and this and this person. Yeah. Let's go do the thing. Um, so that's an interesting, I, I, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Because I was just going to say, how does that feel in your body? Oh my God, I'm yeah, curious. I'm like, because like, I, I could see you kind of like, Ugh, you, you started to get the shoulder earrings, mm-hmm. which by the way, to me means oftentimes I'm onto something. Yeah, for sure. Really the hardest thing I think for everyone is the people. Like I can eat glass too for a month. I'm never going to find the work hard. The work is not hard. It's just work. And I will do the work. Yeah if the things around it are rewarding. And the things to me are always the people and the products. But what I will say is like in the art world, it's like so normal and so common to just like get a group of artists together that like to make art, who enjoy working with each other and have similar values. I wouldn't even say like interests or like anything, just like similar vibes on how to like work together and then mm-hmm. to be like, let's just make a thing together and see what happens. Like, that's improv. That's most art totally. installations. That's most art collectives. That's, like, so normal. And I don't know why that's, like, so frowned upon in, like, business. I think because there's more money tied to it, right? So it's, like, driving. That's the part that's the most fun, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. That's the part where you're getting to be like, what is this thing? Then once it's a thing, then it's just tasks. To a certain extent, you know, like you can create a podcast. The time where we're in the development phase is when I get to talk to people. And then 90% of the thing is so sending emails, <laughs> putting something in a spreadsheet, following up, you know, it's like that, all that. Eating glass. Is the work. Eating glass. <laughs> to use. Eating glass. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like that, that to me is the exciting part. But I, I think that even if you were to, I think why this is a two-part conversation is because even if you were to do that, let's say you free yourself up and you go, I'm approaching this differently. I'm gonna, there's five people, you know, I've always wanted to work with this, these five people. And mm-hmm. you sit down, and you're like, what are we doing? I think that the thing is, as soon as it becomes a thing, you might wander right back over to checkboxville. Hmm. Because then you'll know all of your experience will tell you what you need to succeed, what you need to hit this level, what you need to monetize it. And all that experience has to come with you. It has to, because otherwise then you're just like, I don't know, you're in an improv group, like doing scenes in your living room. Mm -hmm. But like in order for it to be a thing that you can monetize and turn into a business, if that is your, in fact, your goal, because you need to eat. Right. So then what would be a level of success or like, what Mm. would a day look like if let's say you got your five friends you guys come up with this amazing idea and you start on it and you start working on it and there has to be a plan. So you build a plan, but what would your life look like if you were in a positive relationship with this versus checkboxing? Mm-hmm. And do you know? Yeah, it's a great question. I'll tell you what made me uncomfortable when you said, you know, let's get around the table with five friends and kind of hash things out. The thing that made me uncomfortable there is the thing that gives me the most anxiety are those meetings where everybody's just kind of like sitting there and staring at each other and just like looking in each other's mouths and like waiting for somebody to just like give them some kind of something to do. And not that I have friends that would do that. Like somebody will come up with something, but that is the thing that gives me the most anxiety. It's like, okay, I can't do this. Like somebody has to drive. Does anybody want to drive? I will drive. Okay, great. Let's go. (laughs) Well, but this goes back to like who you would choose. Mm -hmm. If this is an approach you are interested in taking, we have to say that because you might might think about it and be like, no, no, thank you. But if it is, you would need to choose people who sit around that table with you and who are like, okay, I got a whiteboard, no idea is bad, let's just throw shit out. Now, within that, 
this is going to shock no one, but of course I'm on the co-op board for my apartment building because I can't stop myself. And I was on the committee to try to get a, in, implement a flip tax. Again, stop it, Robin, but I can't. And everyone was working together. But of course I showed up as like sort of the admin of the group. So when we left, I would be like, okay, takeaways. You said you're going to work on this. You're going to work on that. I will always and forever fall into that role. That is just who I am. That's why people want me in the committee in the first place. So it's like you'd show up, but then separating out the conversation of just being like, let's just talk. What do we want to do? So like if anyone is sitting and staring at your mouth, then they're not, they shouldn't be around that table with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does come down to selection in that sense. Yeah. For sure. So coming back to the question that you definitely sidestepped. Probably did. What would it look like if you were in alignment with your goal of not deriving happiness from the success or failure of a thing? Like, can you say what that might look like? Yeah. And I've experienced that, right? Okay, there have great. been there have been moments of that experience and I appreciate and cherish those and definitely hope that I will be able to do that again. I think what has been and maybe why I'm so stuck on this, like, okay, what is the directionality here? Like, what do I use as my Ariadne's thread, right? Is the fact that I was able to be in those situations with people that I love building things that we thought were cool. Yeah. And feel like I'm having a party on the deck of the Titanic because the broader infrastructure around it was either failing or otherwise being impactful in negative ways that yeah. I didn't want to support. I have confidence that that problem that you just said, you can solve. Hmm. Like you get your people, you have your idea, and you want to create a space where it isn't the deck of the Titanic. I, well, I have haven't abs- yet. I think that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, but you have a lot of learnings. Yeah. And I, but I but that's think the that, fear, I think, I, right now. Yes, and I think the thing we're circling around is that if you can't articulate what the positive thing that it would look like, if you can't say it would look like this, I would feel this, I would feel this. If you can't articulate that, I don't know how you can get that, how you can build it. Right. So th- that's why I'm curious what, they're always like, don't, don't create, and then I'm mean, doing the negative even as I say it, like, don't try to create out of a negative. So if I, right. let's say that one of the things I want to What am do I running is, towards yes, versus I, running I, away I wanna from? I want to have a healthy and fit body versus saying I want to lose 30 pounds. Right. So like what- would like three things look like if we trust that the idea will come, we trust that you'll find the good people, and I trust that you know how to run an organization because people are looking at your LinkedIn and going, holy shit, look at all you've accomplished. But like, the what, what would it feel like? What would it look like? And being able to maybe write down real specifics. Mm. So that part, I actually feel like you I mean, fit you have the- that already. You ha- yeah, yeah, you've hit on the crux of the issue, which is that I can very, very clearly write down, I can even down to like the names, right, of the people that I would work with, Yes. of the way in which we would work. Because I, like I said, like I have experienced those things, and then it's just almost like pulling together the highlight reel. But I actually don't right now have the trust in myself to determine how to direct that energy of awesomeness of people towards something that won't make me feel gross eventually, because that's the only thing that thus far I have not been able to find. Like there have been situations, and this is why it's almost like, shit, I've always lived my life on kind of like a greedy algorithm approach where I just Mm -hmm. like select the thing that feels the most awesome in the moment. And I kind of roll with that. Mm -hmm. But that also has gotten me in situations where I am in rooms with awesome people and I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. And then like months or whatever later, I go, oh, yeah, okay, well, that burnt me out because it was awesome, but it amounted to either nothing or something negative, right? So it's like- What's the negative that it would amount to? Well, like, oh, man, actually, I have a great example. Okay. So my previous startup, you know, that we've been working on for four years, and I'm kind of sunsetting at this stage, was in the AI for sales space. And I got into the space without knowing kind of anything about sales, really. Like the go-to-market side of the house was complete news to me, which again, this is why I love 
tech because it's like, well, we're going to figure it out, right? Yeah. And fine. So in the process of figuring it out, I learned a lot more about sales. However, the more I learned, <laughs> the more gross it turned out to be in yeah, my view. sales is super right? gross for sure. It was like, I don't know, have you guys heard about revenue swapping? No. Like literally people completely openly talk about the like post on LinkedIn about it kind of thing. But like it's basically at the end of a quarter, if I'm a sales leader and I'm short, you know, 100, 200K from my forecast, I call up my other sales leader buddies at other companies and I go, hey, can you buy my thing for 200K and I'll buy your thing for 200K so we can both hit our targets? I was like, excuse me, this is... You're like building, that's a house of cards is what it is. This is not okay though, right? Like this has to be illegal on some level and clearly not because people are like very openly discussing these things and they're they're like pros and cons of revenue swapping. I'm like, (laughs) please. (laughs) So anyway, it took me a long time to kind of extricate myself from, oh man, I really don't want to be working with this anymore. I had an incredible team. We were building really cool shit. But then all of a sudden, we were in this space where the more I learned about it, I was like, oh, my God, the the impact I'm going to make here might actually end up being net negative. So, yeah, I mean, I'm having like a lot of thoughts because there's a part of me that's like. Feels like you're circling a little. Those are learnings, right, of like Mm. as we go, like every bad date I had led me to marry, which is the one that stuck. So it's like it doesn't have to be a bad thing and it could just be like a more learning into your next thing. Like it doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but then the mistake isn't, it was all a mistake. No, totally. And I don't feel that way. I think more that it's just interesting when we discuss like, okay, let's build a team and do this ideation thing and just do, you know, whatever, make whatever we decide is awesome and cool to us. That has kind of led me astray now a few times, even working with an amazing team and even, building things that we thought was cool, ended up in spaces where we were like, oh, wow, this is this is not great, actually, right? Yeah. If we take a broader view of it. So to your point, maybe it is just a learning, but I think it's hard for me to go, well, all we're going to do is get together with a team of awesome people and build some stuff because that's how I ended up kind of in those previous <laughs> situations. Yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, it's like, that is part of tech, right? That's the whole yeah. like build it, ship it, fix it later, you know, mm. vibe of it all. It's like tech moves so fast. And I wonder if there's like, like I know a lot of actors who are just like, I just, I fucking hate the audition process. And I'm like, well, that's an inherent in the business. Mm. So you have to get right with it. Like maybe there's a part of just like accepting that that could be one of the outcomes is that because when you're moving so fast at ideas, I don't know that you could afford to do think tanks for two years before you launch something. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how you get learnings without moving it forward. It just might be something to think about. Is there like some work to do with just getting right, like just being a little more comfortable with that uncomfortableness? Because it's like mm-hmm. trying to prevent it. I think that's a that's a thing of what you don't want, but what's a thing that you want? Mm-hmm. Like you've been able to identify a few of the things like that you want to you want to work with cool people. You want you want it to be in the tech space, but like, I do think there's a real exploration of what your life would look like if it was working. Because hmm. I think then that can be your north star, like that can be the thing that helps guide you when you're making these decisions. If you know what your days would look like, or how you would feel accomplished, or feel like this is not gross. Hmm. Yeah, I love that idea. And I think I don't think that's something we're getting to today. I think that that's a thing I, th- I would ask you to think about. Yeah, I think I have to go away and redo the Odyssey planning exercise or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That <laughs> Steph, what was like your a question? Great that Robin plan. I, oh, remember? It's like there was like a des- I think it's like a design tool where you do like three lives and Ooh. you think about you know like five years out or something, and then you do one that's kind of like the default. And then you do another one that was like, oh, what if like money was no object or whatever your biggest constraint is on your default? What's that one? And then you do a third one that's just like totally nuts, like whatever, anything is possible. Nah, 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 nah. And then kind of get inspired by those things and like pull them in and see how, how they make you feel. Fine. Et that's like the, I did. And that's exactly what I want you to do. That's mm-hmm. exactly it. I feel like maybe I should redo it because I have done yeah. it 
many times. I want to do it. Think scaling AI is hard? Think again. With Watson X, you can deploy AI across any environment. Above the clouds, helping pilots navigate flights. And on lots of clouds, helping employees automate tasks. On-prem, so designers can access proprietary data. And on the edge, so remote bank tellers can assist customers. Watson X works anywhere, so you can scale AI everywhere. Learn more at ibm.com slash WatsonX. IBM. Let's create. Gain specialized knowledge at the crossroads of real estate, sustainability, built environments, and infrastructure with Georgetown's one-year Master's in Global Real Assets. Learn to make investment decisions across the built environment, from traditional real estate to infrastructure and sustainability. Plus, you'll get firsthand experience underwriting live deals in hands-on real estate clinics. And with personalized career coaching, as well as access to a robust network of business school alumni and industry leaders, you'll be equipped for success. It's time to tap into the rapidly expanding career opportunities in global real assets, including real estate, infrastructure, private equity, and energy resources. Earn a master's in global real assets from Georgetown to gain in-demand skills and stand out in the real estate industry. Explore the program at msb.georgetown.edu slash gra podcast. Credit Karma is your evolved financial assistant, making managing your finances simpler and more tailored to you. Join us at creditkarma.com to start your personalized financial journey today and continue to grow with our innovations. Credit Karma, evolve your finances. I feel like we're talking about all of these things that are like hypothetical, first of all, or, or past or future. But like you're a human right now and you're struggling with this. So like what is how is it showing up for you right now? Like what is going on that is making you feel? How do you feel? What like what is happening? some type of way? <laughs> cool. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, no. Well, so I'm in therapy always. Hashtag always, always therapy. Same. <laughs> so <laughs> it was interesting. The trajectory I we decided to start shutting down the company back in the beginning of the summer. We let the team go at the end of June. And so it's been coming up, I guess, on three months, two and a half months since we've done it. And there's been a roller coaster of emotions coming out of it. Um, A huge sense of relief where I no longer have to keep doing the thing that's clearly not working or trying to pretend like it's working or sell it to other people or convince myself. So that came with a big sense of relief. There was, of course, a bunch of sadness around, hey, I'm not going to get for the moment to work with these awesome people that I have been working with for four years. Um, And generally, I guess, a sadness of like, hey, we've been trying to do this thing and it hasn't worked. Right. So like fundamentally, that's pretty, pretty much a bummer. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There's a grieving process for when you put that much time into something and it doesn't lift the mm -hmm. way you want. Yeah. And... You know, there are a lot of people who have been extremely supportive. So I guess even if it's not conscious, I, of course, feel like I'm letting people down, including my family, my employees, my investors, etc. Right. So overall, there was some sadness there. And there was also for a while a sense of just needing rest, because when you are pushing something that isn't clear whether it's going to work and you're being bombarded with information essentially oversaturated in terms of, you know, being overstimulated to every day for almost four years, there is a sense of like, (laughs) exhale. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that lasted a few weeks where all I did was just, you know, read Dostoevsky and like tan (laughs) on my patio because I just, I didn't, I couldn't, I could not. There was also a moment in time, right, right after the kind of initial closure where I felt a huge sense of relief, but maybe like the sadness and the tiredness hadn't hit yet where I was like, I'm going to make content. I'm going to do this thing and (laughs) whatever French that lasted two whole weeks. And I was firing on all cylinders. I was going to say, I knew it as as soon as I said it. Damn it. (laughs) 
So anyway, that came kind of to like a screeching halt and fell away. And then I was just kind of out of it. And then I started noticing that like one day a week, I would start getting bored. But then it would kind of the feeling would go away. I'd be like, no, no, still, still gonna just gonna read and eat some cherries and tan. And then it was like two days a week. And all of a sudden it was like three days a week. And I've started realizing that it was kind of bringing me down where I couldn't just like be in my boredom, you know, and my therapist kind of advised this as well. He was like, you should sit with that feeling. I was like, this feeling sucks. Why would I sit with it? What do you mean? No, thank you. No. Um, And so I think I'm now at a point where no better resolved on how to actually deal with the boredom other than find something to do, right? And so I've started coaching some early stage founders. I'm really enjoying, you know, having conversations with other, especially women CEOs who are starting their own companies and they don't have a ton of support. Um, That's obviously not going to feed me, but it feels like more of a soul feeding kind of a situation. Mm. And I have a bunch of climbing trips coming up. So I'm actually not, I don't have time to work. I like that for you. I love that for you. I love cherries. I love tanning. I love Dostoevsky. But um, I asked that question, and I feel like you even answered it with proving the reason I asked the question, which is that it was a trap. It was a trap so all along. Set a trap and got me. No, I feel like you are sort of doing something that I do sometimes, which is like not feeling much Mm. or like not like identifying the feeling but like almost from like a conceptual place rather than like a body place I heard something at the very beginning that has like come up a few times and I wrote it down um you said like your LinkedIn profiles like people are like wow look at how amazing you are and you're like look at all the things that I've done that have failed and you've like sort of said that a few times and so I would say that the gift you should give yourself is to maybe like write a little mantra or something of like ways you can trust in yourself and your, the like beautiful things that you've built and made and how you always have a direction. Like you have a direction. The thing is that the problem you're solving for is fake. Like it's real, but it's fake. Great. You know, like (laughs) I'm so, I'm so glad you're saying that stuff because it's exactly what I wanted to say is like, you have everything you need. And it's like, I do agree with Steph that you're very conceptual. You're leading with your thoughts and because you're you're very clearly intelligent. And I would challenge you as your homework to, like, I would have you put, I have everything I need as one of your mantras, because I believe that when you start whatever process you're going to start, in order to come away from the checkboxing, which is the the original thing that we started talking about, is that you just have to pay attention to how you feel and you just have to pay attention to the process. And it would be very helpful to stop in the moments and be like, is this, is this bringing me joy? Is this what I want to do? What are my instincts? Mm. You know, you, you are so clearly high processing, but I would love to see you slow down and, and come in and be like, I have everything I need to think about this would this bring me joy? Like very Marie Kondo-ish, like, but with your, with your employment situation, does this spark joy? Does this, Mm. does this move me where I'd like to go? Can I think of this holistically long-term? Because, because if you were out of processing and into feelings and thoughts, like you might have, and I don't still don't think it's a mistake, but you might've been like, is sales ultimately where I would like to put my energy? You might have, you might not have, I suspect you were in the problem solving side of it being like, oh, this is awesome. We could market this. We could sell this. We can, but like, it'd be nice to more checking in here Hmm. in the heart. Well, okay. There's like a ton of things that y'all said that kind of resonated. One of them, just from what Steph was saying, is it's funny because I'm saying I don't want to be checking any more boxes because that clearly has not made me happy. And so what I'm trying to do is to be like, well, what is a post box paradigm? Or like, what is, what is like a different, maybe I need to figure out a different intrinsic box or something else, right? Which is like, okay, fine, like maybe, but also what's interesting about it is that I'm actually just like afraid of doing the same thing that I have done before kind of Uh thing. So like that's where the discomfort is in a sense. 
And what I find interesting about what you're talking about, Robin, is like, I knew when we were doing and when we ended up in sales that I was like, this is not the place for me. But my thinking was, I'm going to do this. I'm going to chew this glass because that's what's required for fulfillment or success or whatever, right? So like, I think what Steph picked up on is that I'm still, even though I don't even necessarily think that way, but I'm calling these things failures, Yep. even though like, Yes, they didn't pan out, but they're all sort of spiraling me up to whatever. Absolutely. To the is next, next thing. Or not next. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, and like, what if you were able to approach that next thing from a more grounded in yourself point of view? Mm-hmm. Like, that to me is the next horizon. That still feels so naughty. It's because like, you, oh my because God, you're so fucking smart and you're so like, Thinking all this through, almost too. It's to the detriment of you that you are able to, you've done it so many times in this conversation that when we get into the feelings world, you bring in another paradigm or a thing. And it's it's fucking brilliant. It's 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 like how you've gotten your success. <laughs> I thought you it's were like, gonna be like, it's fucking exhausting, which it is. <laughs> Bullshit, Masha. <laughs> oh my god. I, I bet for you it is exhausting. Cut it I off. bet for you oh, yeah, it is I exhausting. I can rationalize literally anything. Okay, yes. but even with rationality, you now have literal data that you chose not to trust yourself and that little voice in your head and you chose to eat the glass and that was was the wrong wrong choice maybe Mm. and now you have that data so even if you get into the non-feeling rational place which like you know that's where I sit all the time we're all gonna end up there yeah you have you have the data and what if you took the judgment away what if you took the judgment away if you end up there it's just like oh it's it's my moment to start again. Mm-hmm. That's the the mindfulness side of this, which is like, oh, no, I did it again. Let me try again. Mm-hmm. Well, I, that didn't pan out the way I had hoped. I had a different vision for that, but what are my feelings? Like building some kind of a process of like, well, how do I feel about that? Was there anything I ignored? Like, what do we love in tech? A post mortem. <laughs> Right. Like, we love a postmortem. Can we, we post mortem? Yeah, can we have a pre, a post, a po post, a pre post? Can you post mortem yourself a little bit, but from an emotional point of view, like what, what, what red flags did I miss? And without judgment, I just want you mm. to be a little easier on yourself. Oh my God. I'm I know. Like- I'm sorry, Masha. I'm <laughs> sorry, but I do want that. Right. I- and I do want you to believe that you have everything you need. You don't need to be somebody different. You don't need, like you, you do, like it's clear. I love that I don't for even me. Think you need like another paradigm. Like you have all the paradigms. Don't need another you know? paradigm. You're just putting your the the consistent is you, and you're the good part. There's just like little mm. organization systems that you're putting yourself in to see if it works better. Um, I always take notes when I'm like in these so that I can focus because it's me, and I have three <laughs> things underlined, and they say. Approach work like art collaborativeness, which I don't think that's a word, but today it is. It is now. Play more. Trust in self. And I there it honestly, is. I'm like, those are good notes, subconscious of Steph's brain. I feel like those are the three, my three things that I feel like you should write on a sticky note and like do all the time. Also, you just came up with the paradigm. The paradigm. Like the new paradigm. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> We were making such good progress. No, this is it. This is it. I'm saying like the new paradigm is trust yourself. I think that's when you will know you're doing a Masha is when you are starting to think in that kind of language of like building systems that are not the doing work, but like of the, of the who I want to be and where I want to be. As soon as you start going down that road, you know, you're doing a Masha and you need to come back. Mm. Like that's your like snap a rubber band on your wrist moment. Is if you start trying to build paradigms. It's a fair, it's a fair point. I'm gonna try that. I think it's gonna be interesting to see. I don't do that, right? So yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see what that's like. Like the idea of not living in my head all the time is an interesting one. Well, I mean, I first I wanna say thank you because I like I think this was a space that's different from how you normally operate, regardless of going to therapy, just of like, this is kind of like a, an open round table of like, well, what, what, what about this? Or what about that? Like, there's no, like, we're not saying it's this answer, which we almost never do. And you're like, like actively discouraging my being 
too smart about it. I am. Because I'm like, sorry, that's my whole identity. What do you <laughs> right. mean? Because you are. So you already own that. Let's strengthen a different muscle. It's like the, it's like those fucking gym guys that only do the arms. I'm like, guys, can we can I'm we do can guy. we do can we do the leg day once? Maybe <laughs> once a month can we have a leg day? But I I want to say thank you for like coming and just like sitting and exploring with us in this space. And I think what what I found really interesting about this conversation, what I will take away is even the same thing I'm saying to you is that I have all the answers within me. And sometimes it's just as simple as asking a lot of questions and then dialing in and going, no, that doesn't feel right. Mm. Or, Ooh, I felt a little tingle that I, I go toward the tingle. Now that sounds super dirty, but go toward the tingle, Masha. You know what? I love I mean, that. That's that the mantra. A, that might be a great mantra, mantra regardless. <laughs> like in all areas of your life, go there toward the is. tingle. <laughs> I love that. But I, I just want to say thank you. I, this has been such a really interesting conversation. And I, I truly can't wait to hear like what you do end up doing. And if it's something to do with AI sales, I'm not going to lie. I'll be like, really, Masha? No, I'm what? just kidding. <laughs> what did you do? Why? <laughs> Thanks, Robin. But thank you. This was so lovely. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely chat with Masha. I just kind of feel like we could all use help in getting to our heart and maybe out of our heads. I have to tell you that that whole thing, this whole conversation with Masha, it reminded me of this this method that I learned from this fantastic actor, Josh Pice. You got to look him up. He's so fabulous. He's so talented. Um, but he's also an acting teacher, and he works with not just actors, but entrepreneurs. And part of that work is to help folks feel grounded and connected. And he has this this whole thing, this whole theory called I'm back. Now, I, I'm going to try to share it with you all in real time because I think it's so valuable to the conversation that we just had. But this is from Josh's website. It's called Committed Impulse. So I'm going to walk you through it. Okay. Now, the genesis of this idea of I'm back comes from Dr. Deepak Chopra, which, I mean, who doesn't like anything that comes from him? I mean, for the love of all that is holy. Um, so he quotes a study that showed that the average person has something like 65,000 thoughts per day, 65,000 thoughts. But here's the kicker. 95% of those thoughts are the exact same thoughts that passed through your head the day before. So it's just like we're in this like repetitive loop. So Josh created I'm back. Now, the idea of this is that whenever you're aware that your mind is either kind of like pulling you into the past or the future, or, you know, if it's just like you're in some like really unhealthy loop of things that you say to yourself, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, whatever that conversation is that you're always saying to yourself, okay, your job in that moment is to say, I'm back. That's the whole first step. That's it. All you got to do is say it out loud. I'm back. So you, you kind of have to like pretend like no one's looking. You, you really have to do it. I want you to do it with me. Okay. Like I'm talking, you find yourself not listening and you just go, I'm back. Okay. Step two. Now you're going to connect to your immediate environment. So you're going to look around and really see what's in front of you. So, so do it right now. So I'm looking around. I'm seeing two sound panels. I'm seeing my gray linen curtains and my bamboo desk. If I turn, I can see my bed. So it's, it's, I'm grounding myself back in what is actually happening here. Okay. Step three, take a nice deep breath. Step four connect to the sensations in your body. So what am I feeling right now? So I just, I, I said, I'm back. I looked around, I grounded myself. I took a breath. Now, what am I feeling? Okay. I'm, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little anxious. I'm feeling a little like I've got a lot to do today, but guess what? Going through those steps, I now feel more present to what it is I'm doing. So I just wanted to share that with you all because I think it's so relevant for Masha or for anyone, myself included, producer Steph included, who doubts themselves on their direction or doesn't trust the process. Josh is always saying that if you're in the midst of creating, presenting, acting, or just any time that your mind starts creeping back in and telling you, ah, oh, I'm not doing it right and they don't like what I'm doing, just say, I'm back. And if you're worrying, you're contemplating, you're questioning, you're agonizing, use I'm back. Rinse and repeat as needed, right? Look, our brains, they really can be drivers for wonderful accomplishments. I think Masha is a perfect example of that. So, you know, well, let's keep all that. Let's keep all the smarts. But sometimes I think our thoughts can get in the way. And so we need to create habits to bring ourselves back into our bodies. And this is one that helps me, of course, when I remember to do it. <laughs> 
I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And you are too. Okay, that's it for today, folks. But before we go, I want to say so many thanks to Masha for sharing her whole story with us and just letting us chat away about box checking and future plans. And if you are interested in hearing more about Josh Pice and his work, head to committedimpulse.com. For more Robin, and you may need that, you probably don't need it, but like if you do, you can follow me at Real Rob Hops on all the platforms, all the socials, as the kids today say. Well Adjusting is an edit audio original series. It's exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Our producer and editor is Maria Passingham, and our production manager is Kathleen Speckert. Thank you to the entire edit audio team and to you for listening. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it.